Welcome to a series that we call The End of Times, where we go through the book of Revelation verse by verse to try and understand what it is we can expect to happen in the end times, or the time Jesus referred to as the end of the age. Where we're at at this point is John has been taken up in the Spirit into the literal throne room of God. And it's very significant that he's been taken up in the Spirit. Because um, you cannot be in broken form and be in the throne room of God. Being in the presence of God essentially means you get vaporized. Uh, Moses, when he asked to look at God, was essentially told, we can't look straight at my face or you'll die. Uh, nobody could walk into the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was or they would vaporize. Only the high priest who first sacrificed an innocent spotless lamb for himself, then he could go in. But what John sees in this throne room is God is surrounded by millions of angels and then he's also surrounded by 12 elders who have crowns on and I believe those to be humans and there's a lot of reasons just go back and watch the episode on the on the elders but then he's also surrounded by four living creatures now these are animals these are creations of God and their role is to surround the throne of God regardless of where the spirit and the throne go they are there and they do not turn they face the same direction all the time the throne room may turn but they are constantly praising god it says that they never stop praising god um, there that's what they were designed to do um, and then john describes what god looks like because again it's the only way he could look at him as being in the spirit and he, he describes him as being this beautiful crystal form that's pure like glass um, and then in that moment, John happens to notice that there's a scroll in God's hands. And this whole debate comes up based on who is worthy to open the scroll. And then we find out that it is the lamb that was slain that is worthy to open the scroll only uh, because... It is Jesus Christ who is bringing about the kingdom, and that's what this revelation is all about. So we're picking up right there in Revelation 6, verse 1. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, with a voice like thunder, Come and see. Now, I want to take a moment to before we talk about what it is John's going to be looking at. Is what There's a lot going on in this moment and what just took place in that verse. Um, and it's important, we t touched on this in the last episode, but it's important that you understand that that scroll is the ordained prophecy of the coming of the kingdom of God that's always been promised on earth as it is in heaven, literally. Um, and that's what is, is in that scroll, is that prophetic event. And when God reads it and speaks it into reality, those events just take place. There's a lot of things that have to happen to bring about the coming of his kingdom that are written within that scroll, but they're sealed by seven seals. And it's important that we separate those seven seals from the actual scroll itself. It's a very important thing. The seven seals are not God's ordained prophetic event bringing about his kingdom. The seven seals are a culmination of events that lead to the opening of God's ordained prophecy. The seven seals are events mostly caused by mankind. And it's very significant that we see that before we start reading what is ordained by God and what is God allowing to happen to bring about his kingdom. I get asked the question a lot, if God is so good, why does he allow bad things to happen? Well, I can answer that in two. There's two answers to that. It's really quite simple. First, we are free. Mankind is innately evil. And if we weren't free to do things, we'd be robots. Uh, then we truly wouldn't be free. If God stopped us from doing everything, we truly would not be free. We'd be robots. Every time you went to do something that ended up bad, if God stopped you, you are not free. But because mankind is innately evil, a lot of bad things happen. Second, there's a lot of things God does stop from happening. God restrains most of the evil that is on the earth and present. The devil walks to and fro on the earth seeking to kill and destroy. And God 
and his spiritual armies are constantly in battle. And that, that battle is taking place right now over you, and it's taking place over me, and it's taking place here. And what we're about to see is that spiritual battle from the view of God. So there's way more evil that God is restraining that he is not restraining but it is mankind that does it. It is not God that ordains it. He doesn't want it to happen. He wanted us to be everlasting, pure love and good, like he created us to be. Our problem is we've caused mankind to fall apart because it is us <laughs> that has eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and that brought about us as in mankind, it brought about this evil into the world and, and then God cannot let us into his holy presence. So these seals are essentially God is allowing spiritual restraints to let loose what he's already seen and what John is now seeing. So ultimately what's taking place is only Jesus Christ can say, okay, then I am letting loose what I've already seen. I'm allowing it to happen. And then you're, we're also going to see as, as then angels play a role in allowing that to happen as well. But it is mankind that is destroying mankind. And we need to be very, very clear on that. God is just simply allowing things to happen. Now, once he starts reading his scroll, well, yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff that's going to take place that God has ordained to happen to bring about the coming of his kingdom because of what we have done leading up to the reading of that scroll. So it's only the Lamb of God because he was slain and now we can freely enter into God's holy presence. So like John is in the spirit because he can boldly enter into God's holy presence and that's kind of what we're looking at too. So that's why only the Lamb of God can loose these seals and that's important to note. So let's, let's go back. Okay, so it's only the Lamb of God that can open it. So now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder, come and see. You know, I, I think it's important to pause there too, because something that I hope you've seen at this point is that John's really there. He has one of the four living creatures talking to him and inviting him to come and see. And I, I hope you recall, but back in Revelation 5.5, 5, it was one of the elders who then told him to stop weeping and, and then began to talk about, well, there is somebody worthy to open this scroll. So, you know, you have one of the, the elders essentially telling him, you know, hey, it's okay, here's an answer. And then now you have uh, one of the four living creatures that are living animal creatures in the throne room of God saying, come and see. So that's significant because they're talking to him and interacting with him in the throne room of God. Um, this is very significant because it says that John is in the spirit. So the reality is, is so are they. They're in the spirit as well. What you have is you have um, John's spirit intimately intertwined with the spirit of God and the spirit of heavenly hosts and the spirit of the throne room and they're all intimately intertwined looking at reality of prophetic events, it's really kind of a beautiful moment because we should see ourselves like that where when we're in the throne of God, we're interacting with these things. We're in there. It's, it's not like John's seeing something. He is literally present. And I think the fact that now twice, uh, one of these different types of things he's seen is, has interacted with him. And I think that's a very, very significant moment. Come and see. That's very significant. So I want to take a moment. I want to talk about what is it John's about to see? What, are the, what is it they're all going to see? They're all staring at the same thing. Um, they all are there to watch it because they all knew this day was coming. John's the only one that's going, where am I and what is going on? Um, so they invite him to come and see. So I want to talk about what he's about to see in, in a sense that Revelation cannot be read like a timeline or a story because what's happening in his here is what he's about to see is events that we will see multiple times in Revelation but in different views. 
um, what John sees um, is in the midst of the four living creatures. So he's in the throne room of God, and there's the four living creatures surrounding the throne, and he is about to look into the midst of the four living creatures um, in the literal throne room of God. Later, we will see much of these same events taking place on earth, but also in a spiritual form, because spiritual form is very different than literal form. Like what we see with our eyes, we don't see the half of it. Most of what's taking place in the universe is stuff we, will, we won't see, um, but John is given the glimpse of it. There's a spiritual battle taking place right now all over this planet, and we just can't see it. Um, if, you're, if you're wise enough to know it's there, you will see it in different things happening, if you're, if you're looking for it, but most people are just not looking for it. So later we will see some events taking place in the spiritual realm, like it's still a spiritual realm. And then again in Revelation, we'll see what actually happens on earth, what we see, what we will see with our eyes. And it's important that we see that we're going to see it from the throne room of God in the midst of the four living creatures. And then we're going to see it on earth in the spiritual realm. And then we're going to see it on earth in what we will be able to be, what it is we will be going through. So it's very important that we, we as we go through Revelation, that you see what John is about to see is, is the same thing that we're going to read about a couple more times, but he's seeing it in the midst of the four living creatures. So all of these visions are intertwined together. They, they're all kind of, they, they repeat a similar, you know, the, a lot of the same events. Some new events will pop up in all of them, but they all kind of tell the same series of events, but they're all intertwined. And it's, it's real important that we kind of see it like that before we say, oh, here's what's about to happen. Because the very next verse is what's about to happen. It'll be the very first verse that we will see that'll be future events. So it's really important that we kind of get that before we get into those. These visions are all intertwined. John's going to see lots of different things. Right now he's in the throne room looking in the midst of the four living creatures. But in this moment in the throne room of God, um, Jesus is about to break the seal and one of the four living creatures says, come and see. Um, so that's where we're at right now. I kind of thought about going into the first horseman, but... Man, that, you could talk about that one for a couple episodes. I just think it's important at this point that we pause and we say, what is going on here? And what's about to happen as we break that seal is that we're going to see the very next verse is future events. Um, the first seal is the first uh, horseman. And we're going to go over that Saturday, this coming Saturday. I will say, I think that seal has already been broken. And we'll talk about that next Saturday. So, you know, again, thanks for sticking with us. This is an awesome moment right here. And I'm glad we took a little bit of time to talk about what it is we're going to see and why we're seeing it the way we're seeing it. So if you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support our channel through Patreon, that link is below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests. So never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.